Ever since Minions The Rise of Gru hit theaters, I've gone back and rewatched every single Despicable Me film and every single special feature just to figure out which film I like the best. So today I'm going to rank all five Despicable Me and Minions films from worst to best. And please be sure to join me down in the comments section below and let me know which film featuring Gru and his minions is your favorite. Hey everybody, Dragon Movie Guy here. The Despicable Me franchise has pulled in over $1.5 billion at the worldwide box office. So I'd be curious to see which Despicable Me film comes in at number one on your list. Let me know in the comments section down below. Now, let's get down to my list. In at number five is the one that started it all for the franchise. We're talking about 2010's Despicable Me. <laughs> The first Despicable Me movie has a much slower pace, with a more deliberate, intellectual sense of humor. It has the feel of an animated storyboard playing out in sequence, rather than action scenes in a movie. The animation is much lower in quality, especially compared to what Pixar was putting out around that time. We also get a much more generic interpretation of the minions. There is little to no distinction in intelligence, personality, or looks. The larger the mass of an object, the quicker the effects of the shrink ray wear off. <laughs> Despicable Me got the ball rolling on the franchise, but looking back now on the clunky animation and character development, it feels like a rough draft. It's a good start, but clearly number five on this list. In at number four is the most recent Despicable Me film, 2017's Despicable Me 3. New director of the AVL doesn't waste any time after taking over and fires both Gru and his wife, Lucy. Which one of you losers is Agent Gru? That would be me. Hey! <laughs> yes, sir! You're fired! Gru finds out he has a long-lost twin brother named Drew in a country named Fredonia. With three separate storylines, Despicable Me 3 forcing Margot out of her comfort zone in a somewhat rushed case of cultural miscommunication. Nobody picked him. Go take a bite of his cheese, young lady. <gasps> I am Nico! Yes! Thank you, Margo! Gru and Lucy fail to capture Balthazar Brat in the opening credits, but they do stop him from getting the giant diamond he's trying to steal. The minions also get their own storyline, including a prison break ripped straight out of Superman 2. Go, uh, uh. go, go! go. The Minions storyline ties together well with the main story by the end of the movie, but the whole film feels rushed. Too many ideas and too little time, a more focused story would have helped the film rank higher on this list. In at number three is the most recent flick in the franchise, 2022's Minions, The Rise of Gru. We see much more of Gru than in the first Minions movie, including an attempt by 12-year-old Gru to impress his villainous idols. Well, I am going to be a super villain. Kevin Stewart and Bob return as our lead minions, holding down most of the minions part of the story, including learning Kung Fu from Master Chow, voiced by Michelle Yeoh. Now, you. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. We also add a fourth lead minion. Otto's a short and free-spirited minion with braces on his teeth. The 70s fashion and cultural references are used well, especially Chirashi P. Henson's Bell Bottom. Gru and his minions fight the vicious six. Visually stunning flick, Minions 2 almost feels like there are too many ideas and storylines. This second Minions film doesn't stop to let the audience absorb the story and characters. The film sometimes feels too crowded and less focused, resulting in a number three position on my list. To see more franchise ranking videos like this one, please be sure to hit the red subscribe button until it turns white. That'll let you know whenever I post a new video. In at number two is the only love story in the franchise so far. 2013's Despicable Me 2. Gru meets his match in Lucy, a force for good, recruiting Gru to join the AVL. Agent Lucy Wilde of the AVL. Police! 
you really should announce your weapons after you fire them, Mr. Ah. Lipstick Taser! Gru and Lucy's love story isn't the only romance in this Despicable Me sequel. Margot fills the pitter-patter of Cupid's era with Antonio, the son of Eduardo Perez, the owner of a local Mexican restaurant, Salsa and Salsa. Needless to say, Gru isn't eager to see his adoptive daughter get her first boyfriend. What is going on here? Se llama Antonio. Me llamo Margo. Llama llama ding dong. Who cares? Let's go. Gru's new job with the anti-villain league has him suspecting Antonio's dad is the legendary villain El Macho. Unfortunately, no one believes Gru until it's almost too late for Lucy and even El Macho himself. We could have ruled the world together, Gru. <gasps> With better pacing than the first Despicable Me film and more fun sight gags for the minions as a whole, the romance plot lines work well in Despicable Me 2, bringing it in at number two in my franchise ranking. In at number one is 2015's Minions, the franchise's first spin-off featuring the adorable yellow sidekicks getting their own feature film. And featuring the best pacing and the best balance between character and story, and the best sight gags for the minions to date. <laughs> we get a fun origin story for the minions, showing just how far back they go in their quest to serve an evil master. The big bad for this film is Scarlet Overkill, showing up in 1960s England, trying to steal Queen Elizabeth's crown. <laughs> No longer a coronation, it is an execution! We also get well-defined Minions characters for the first time in Kevin, Stuart, and Bob. Kevin is our leader, Stuart is our musician, and Bob is our short but lovable Minion who just wants to be included. Kevin grows large and in charge and must save Stuart and Bob from Scarlet and her weapons. Hello! Oh, my bear. <laughs> For Anna. By far the best film in the franchise thus far, the minions finally get their own personalities, making all their sight gags so much funnier and distinct, just like the Three Stooges. We find out the minions' origin story and get the best pacing out of any movie in the franchise so far, and most importantly, we find out how Gru gets the minions to follow him in the first place. Minions comes in at number one in my Despicable Me franchise ranking. Which one of these films is your favorite? And are you looking forward to Despicable Me 4 coming out in 2024? Let me know in the comments section down below. To check out my Jurassic Park franchise ranking, please be sure to click right over here. I've been Dragon Movie Guy, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.